Hi, this is Mark from LongIWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. I'm pretty sure this is like episode 74 or something, so pretty impressive, pretty cool. It's still going. So today I want to talk to you all about watch bezels. Actually, it started out uh, about watch bezels. I was going to do countdown, count ups, dual time, and then I started looking at dial faces and telemeters and uh, tachometers and pulsometers also so i've got a lot of watches to show you different scales i don't know eight ten watches i'm going to try to keep the video quick so i'm, I'm going to go fast uh i'm wearing my dc86 which has a count up bezel <laughs> and my flight master which has a slide rule bezel um but i believe all the watches i'm going to show you are watches that actually sell so dual purpose video if you will let's check them out so this video might actually be comprised of the most expensive collection of watches <laughs> i've ever done in a video um just what happens a lot of them that i grabbed are quite pricey so i'm starting with a marathon Cesar. um this is an example of a count up bezel this is probably the most classic bezel uh, that we know about I've covered this in other videos um, like I said but I'm trying to do everything in one video so it's like a good reference point um, the count up bezel goes from 0 to 60 generally it is unidirectional which this one is and what it is used for look guys you can use your bezels for whatever you want time in your pasta time in your laundry time in your eggs whatever you want to do uh, but generally what it is used for what it was invented for is diving um, you would set the triangle at the minute hand of your watch when the dive master gives the down signal you would that's when your dive time starts and right before you ascent um, th that is technically the end of your dive that you'd use for um, dive calculations so let's say you spent 20 minutes underwater you go come up and the minute hand points to 20 let's just advance let's say with that okay we we're underwater even though you're still ascending you were underwater for 20 minutes use that in all your dive calculations the reason it's unidirectional is because it will always make you look like if it slips it'll always make you look like you're underwater longer than you actually are which makes your calculations for consecutive dives more conservative okay it has nothing to do with air um, that is probably one of the biggest misnomers so this is the count up bezel again usually used for diving but you guys have all adapted to use it for anything in your life that you want to time so rarer would be the count down bezel same bezel technology okay um damascos happen to usually go both directions they are very nice clicking uh, this is a dc82 chronograph um, no running seconds the way this one works would be kind of like the same idea let's say you're going to go on a dive again and you plan to have 20 minutes of bottom time so the dive master says okay let's go down you would put the 20 at your minute hand maybe like that and then when you look at your watch 20 minutes later technically the minute hand should be at the triangle and then you would know that that had 20 minutes has elapsed and then you could count one minute thereafter if you want to stay down longer conversely if you're making a nice london broil on the barbecue and you want to do six minutes aside here you go six minutes are up and then you would move it to another six minutes and you can time your london broil uh, again whatever you want to do but this would be now the count down bezel kind of kind of funky looking uh but uh rarer but that's what it's used for so in keeping with the external rotating bezel style this is what's known as the dual time bezel on an islander uh not to be confused with a gmt bezel which i will show you in a moment a dual time bezel is marked in 12 hours okay one hour for every hour marking it rotates usually it's technically it should rotate both ways since it has nothing to do with diving uh, and safety but most companies even like myself um we just put it on the same kind of a dive bezel so it, it is a unidirectional um so this can be used to track a second time zone in 12 hour format this is a 12 hour watch meaning it has an hour hand that rotates twice a day once every 12 hours to put a 24 hour bezel on here would make absolutely zero sense i would refuse to do it um as a seller if you want to do it after market that, that's your prerogative but it makes no sense so i don't do it um so it's three o'clock here in new york um and how now how are you going to track a second time zone uh let's say my buddy in i i, I don't know I, I always use london for some reason uh it's, it's five hours ahead of me so it's eight o'clock there right now so i'm going to rotate 
until the eight gets to the hour hand, okay? So we're going around the horn here, eight. So local time, three o'clock. London time, eight o'clock. In a half hour, it'll be 8.30 in London. In an hour, it'll be nine o'clock in London. So this, and how do we know how many hours ahead we, we went? Well, we moved the five, five hours ahead to the 12. Six hours ahead would be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, I'm sure you can figure all that out. If your time zone is 12 hours away, just flip your AM, PM, obviously no need for a dual time bezel. Um, but this will stay tracking that second time zone uh, until you happen to move the bezel again, or one of us goes into a daylight savings time mode. Um, so that's the dual time bezel. As I have found um, when I started making these watches, uh, the dual time bezel is something a lot of people want for the pure functionality. Um, you can also use it as a timer if you want. Um, you would set your hour hand at the, the, the zero at the hour hand. And let's say you wanna know, you know what's time two hours. Well, when two hours go by, the hour hand's gonna be pointing to two. It kind of works, yeah, whatever. Uh, so kind of a timer in that regard. Also a count up timer, if you will. So stick with me on the dual time here. This is now a GMT bezel on a Squale. Um, it is marked in 24 hour increments on the bezel because the watch has, let me get the, let me move the hands a bit, sorry about that. Because the watch has a 24 hour hand, okay? So you see when I just rotated the, the hands, this red hand only moved half as far as the hour hand because this red hand here rotates once every 24 hours whereas the minute hand, uh, hour hand rotates twice in 24 hours. Uh, so the hour, the GMT hand as we call it, reads off of the external bezel. So do two ways if you want. So let's say you want to keep your GMT hand where it is. Um, you can rotate your bezel and make it read 0600 hours, wherever that other time zone is. See, now here you can do 20, you know, you could do tw uh, time zones all around the world, half time zones, whatever you want to do. 18 hours ahead, the only thing you won't know is the date change, um, but that's how this works. You can rotate it there. Okay, so that's the uh, GMT bezel. Interesting to note, when Rolex first made the GMT for the Pan Am, for Pan Am pilots, when Pan Am came to Rolex and said, make us a GMT model, um, Rolex made a watch with a dumb 24 hour hand that rotated once a day, could not be adjusted independently and they slapped the 24 hour red blue bezel on the watch, thus people call it the Pan Am. But over time movements got advanced enough that they could make it such that you can rotate the hour hand, the GMT hand, excuse me, I'm doing it, in uh, half hour or hour increments, it snaps into position. So you could adjust it to whatever time zone you want. So you could either use the bezel to rotate, you could use the GMT hand to move, or technically you could use it in three time zones if you want. Um, this could be your, uh, the red hand could be your GMT hand, if you will, and then the bezel could be used to track a third time zone. Kind of hokey, if you ask me, but it, it still kind of works. So keeping with um, popular bezel themes, this is the tachometer, not the tachometer. Tachometer measures RPMs, right? Um, revolutions per minute. This is a uh, tachometer. Uh, this is used to measure units per hour of anything, anything you want it to be. Um, let's say you're in a car, easiest case, and, you're tra and you travel, and your car travels, you start the chronograph, you watch the needle, and after one minute, you've gone a mile. Let's just assume the needle's pointing to the 60. Guess what that means? You are going 60 miles an hour. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? Let's say more of a modern day case. Let's say you, you start doing homeschooling with your kids and you wait until the first complaint comes about they don't want to do it and then you would hit stop and you say, okay, my child will complain 400 times per hour. It works with anything. Um, some tachometers will go more than a minute. The scale will keep reducing again down to 30 after two minutes. Um, but really all it is is the number of seconds displayed on the dial divided into 3,600, which is the number of seconds per hour. Uh, so at 10, we'd be right at 360. And that's why at 60, we're at 60. So you can think about it that way, but whoops, that is your tachometer, units per hour of anything you want it to be. Okay, still keeping somewhat 
<laughs> popular would be the slide rule, uh, E6B slide rule, if you will. Um, I did a whole video on this. I'm not going to go over it. This is really used for calculations. This one in particular is used for mostly um, flight calculations, fuel, distance, uh, conversions from statute miles to nautical miles, all the other stuff. But it's basically two scales, um, a logarithmic scale rotating and a fixed scale on the dial. Um, and all different scales at that, and you now you do calculations with it. I did show how you can do simple math, um, calculate a tip or some other stuff on another watch and learn if you want to check it out, um, but it does indeed work. Just so you know, this is uh, an Echo Drive Nighthawk. You see it's going two second intervals. I did just find one hiding in inventory, so the battery is low. That's why it's ticking in two second intervals because it just got exposed to light. Okay, getting into now a little more archaic, if you will, but still kind of out there, would be the compass bezel. The compass bezel is just like a regular bezel. This one happens to be internal, but it's got the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, with um, degree increments on it. How would you use this? Well, if you know where north is, you can align it. You can align north, and you would know where north, with south, east, and west are, obviously. Kind of pedantic, I guess, but um, how would you use it to find north? Well, Again, covered in another video, but let's say it is 10 a.m. here. Um, this is a Boy Scout trick. Northern Hemisphere, point the hour hand at the sun. So let's say the sun is in the horizon over there. Or, you know, ab above me, but it's, it's there. I point my 10, my, my hour hand, that whatever time it is, uh, at the sun. Okay? And then I bisect the hour hand and 12 o'clock on the dial. So a line kind of going right through 11 o'clock. Uh, and... That is due south. So I would move south. Well, that's north. Let's go. Do, 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 do. West. That's south? That's south. So that's south, north, uh, west, and east. So these are my four cardinal directions now. That's the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it's actually a little bit backwards. You point the um, dead north at 12 o'clock. I shouldn't say north in this case. You point the 12 o'clock marker at the sun. And then halfway between the hour hand and the 12 o'clock marker is due north. And then you can set the same thing up again. Uh, compass bezel, internal or can be external. Now we're getting into the wacky and strange. This is the uh, pulsometer or pulse meter. The doctor's watch from Aristo. I sell it in quartz and I sell it in automatic. The way this works is when the, when the sweep hand hits either the 30 or the 60, you start taking a patient's pulse. You count. No, start counting. You count to 15 pulses. Whenever you hit 15 pulses, you look at where the needle is sweeping. Uh, so let's say you counted 15 pulses in 15 seconds. So wait till it gets to 45. And that tells you that the patient has a heart rate of 60 beats per minute. Um, again, at 12 o'clock, you can repeat the process. So the, the scale is just repeated every 30 seconds. But you see it says you count 15 pulses. Um, oh. It's a doctor's watch. Uh, you, you do see when someone takes your pulse uh, in a doctor's office. I'm, I'm sure that they, uh, at least when I get it done, they look at their watch. They're not doing it for, for, I don't think they're counting 15 pulses usually. I think they usually go on it for like 6 or 10 seconds and multiplying it out. But pretty cool that this exists. Uh, cool watch for a, uh, a nurse or a doctor. And then lastly, I've actually got two scales on here to show you. Um, I do have another pulsometer, which is interesting. It is, though, a base 30 pulsometer. So you start your chrono and you count 30 pulses, and then you see this black scale on the outside. After a minute, obviously it's 30 beats per minute, and down at 30 would be 60 beats per minute. So you count out 30 pulses, and then you stop the chrono, and your patient's got a heart rate of 140 beats per minute. That's the pulsometer. More archaic is the telemeter, which is on the, ins the inner scale, where it says one kilometer, two kilometer. This would be used to time, I guess, the distance of a storm, um, or the distance of a baseball to you in a stadium when you when you see the ball get hit you would press start and then when you hear the crack of the ball you'd hit stop and maybe you got cheap seats and you're a kilometer away uh, but really more realistically you're in a you're you know experiencing a storm you see lightning you press start and you wait and then when you hear the thunder you press stop and the storm is about one and a half kilometers away from you. It's just a scale. It's using the speed of sound uh, it, at standard temperature and pressure, which is roughly 340 meters per second. So about every three seconds or so is one kilometer of distance. That is how that is working because the speed of light, things that you see, are many, many orders of magnitude greater than the speed of sound. Um, 
I think that is it. That covers it. Uh, I went over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine different watches. So I think that's all the scales that you need to know. This has been Mark from LongHourWatch.com showing you a bunch of different bezels and scales. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. Questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.